Okay, hopefully we can see this real good here. Uh, this is uh, Strong's Hebrew Lexicon. And I've searched up uh, one of the numbers that they have for um, God's name. And it comes out to being Baal on this. And uh, they give you a bunch of definitions of these and names that contain the word. But what we actually have here is that anytime the word Lord is spoken in your Bible, that the word should be Baal. Now people are going to say, no, 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 that's just a word for Lord. No, 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 no. That's a word for this entity that you used to feed your kids to called Baal. You, you dis it, instinctively, you would not ever again use that word if you, if Baal was the creature that you threw your kids to and you wanted to avoid it, you would no longer go up to the God of Israelites and call him Baal. It would be insulting to him and to yourself. You realize that. That's logic. That you, if you were to say like, um, devil, and you were worshiping the devil, okay, and saying devil, and then you went up to God and you said, devil, that's not going to work. That's kind of the end of that, guys. This, this shows you a bunch of different variations of this ball. Ball chastor, a place, a modification, possessor of a village. Ball is the leader. It's the thing. Jaw is the master. Here you go. Baal Jaw, Jaw is master. Ba Baal Jaw, an Israelite, is Baal. So an Israelite you call Bealaya. It means people of Baal. Okay. Uh, look at this right above here. A symbolical name for Jehovah, Baalai. So if you are with God, you're Baalai. Just take the I off the end of it, and the symbolical name for Jehovah is Baal. People say Baal means Lord. I'm telling you it doesn't. Look at this. Okay, so we take a look here at Baal, and Baal is actually, um, of course, they're going to try to say that in Northwest Semitic languages, it just means Lord. But then they tell you that Baal is particularly associated with the storm and fertility god Hadad and his local manifestations. And that Hebrew compiled and curated to spam over centuries that they referenced their own god and switched it as Yahweh, who's described as a false god. This was taken into Christianity and Islam. They used Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies, in this situation. Baal drives from the Greek word Baal. Baal, 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 all those other things. No one's saying God here. They're all saying Baal. They're telling you here with all of this that everybody in this area, the Canaanites and everybody, Akkadians, all these people, all these people in this area are worshiping Baal. This guy, Baal Hadad, and his father, El, and this is how... This is their leader. This is the Lord. This is usually distinguished as the Lord. It just says the Lord. Well, who is the Lord? Well, we talk about the Lord in the Bible, but what's funny is whenever you read the old Bible, it says Habal. Well, that's not the Lord I'm trying to talk about. Yeah. They say that Baal was used instead of Bel and was used for Marduk. And Adane, which is Adonis, was used for Yahweh. That's great. You're going to use Adonis for Yahweh, okay, just to try to make him different. But one thing's for sure, everything that you put on this guy is actually his epitaphs, his things he has, and his family. All of the um, El Elyon and all that stuff comes from El, 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 this guy here. This is not it. Bel, Zeus, Belos, other figures, Belus. This is who he is. Okay, so we look up Yahweh here under Baal, and it says the title Baal was a synonym in some context of the Hebrew Adon, which is Haddon, Baal Haddon. So we're still at Baal. And Adonai, which is Adonis, which is a Greek god. But they equate the two together. So we're just going to say that this is Baal Hadon. It still uses aliases of the Lord of Israel, Yahweh. Hmm. 
still used as aliases of the Lord of Israel, Yahweh. According to some scholars, early Hebrews did use the names Baal and Baalai in reference to the Lord of Israel, just as Baal, farther north, is decorated as the Ugarit of Lebanon. Hmm. So they're all the same guy, though. They're trying to, you know, trying to, oh, well, over here when I said this, no, 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 all these, all these people in the whole area. When you look this up, it's the whole area. And you can't say, well, this one people in the middle were calling the same name as everybody, but theirs meant something different. Okay, so we look right here. And it says, names including the elements ball, per, um, presumably in reference to Yahweh. The component Baal, in proper names, is, mo is mostly applied to worshippers of Baal, or descendants of the worshippers of Baal. Names including the elements Baal, presumably, are in reference to Yahweh. Why would Yahweh have references to this other Canaanite god? Include the Judge Gideon, who also is known as Jerubal All, the Lord strives. Baal strives, not the Lord, Baal strives. Saul's son is Eshbaal. Baal is great. David's son is Baalita. Baal knows. The name Baalia, the Lord is Jah. Hold on, what is that? Well, it says here, Yahweh is Baal. You see that. Yahweh is Baal. Yahweh is Baal. Hmm, that's, that's strange. So ironically, we even have it in here where they try to clear up the change. They say at first the name Baal was used by the Jews for their God without discrimination, but as the struggle between the two religions developed, the name Baal was given up by the Israelites as a thing of shame, and even names like Jerubal were changed to Jerobosheth. Hebrew Bosheth means shame. So you mean to tell me that you took a person's name and changed it to where their per their name would be shame you're trying to tell me that you're trying to well what you're trying to tell me is that later in the bible you tried to equate it with shame you're like oh well um yeah i know it looks like he worshiped him so what we're going to say is that his name is based on the fact that he's in vain are you serious has anyone in history ever named their kids something like that So we continue here, and we find that Baal Bereth, well, Bereth is actually the city of Beirut. And Baal Bereth is Lord of the Covenant. Lord of the Covenant with who? With the Israelites. There was a covenant made with the Israelites when they went astray after the death of Gideon, according to Hebrew scriptures. The same source relates that Gideon's son, Abimelech, hmm, why would your son be son of Melech, Moloch? Why would you be naming Gideon's son is now named Abimelech, son of Moloch? Hmm, so now you're, you're putting that on him too. Nobody seems to be naming their kid off of the other things. In fact, they even tell you that um, jo a passage was made to seek him the scene of joshua's covenant between the tribes of israel and el yahweh our god of israel and a later one describes his location as the house of el Berith. so this would be the same thing so the house of yahweh would be the house of baal that's what that just equates right there um you know don't think i'm trying to read shit into this it basically tells you that Beirut was the place where they had this, where these people didn't have the other name, and that they had even left their regular God and went astray, went astray to, and when they went astray, who are they worshiping? Well, they're worshiping the same dude. And, uh, let's see, they seem to phrase the struggle of monotrily and monotheism against polytheism. However, Yahweh is firmly identified in the Hebrew scriptures with El Elyon, whose Canaanite figure appears hostile to the cult of Baal, even in the Paulist accounts of the Ugarit and the Phoenician societies. So yeah, El Elyon, the Most High, that's El 
then that's one of those gods over there. It has nothing to do with So here we have the classical sources up top. Uh, outside of the Jewish and Christian context, the various forms of Baal were identified and rendered in classical sources as Baal or Belus. Josephus, who states that Jezebel built a temple to the god of the Tyrians, which they call Belus, and describes Baal of Tyre. A Baal was usually associated with Jupiter Belus and sometimes with Hercules, but Jupiter. So we have, there's the other uh, they're trying to give that reference to it, but then they also say that it is with Saturn. Um, it says Hermon identifies Demarius with uh, Baal, but Baal Hamon, however, is identified with the Greek Cronus and Roman Saturn. So Baal Hamon is going to be that that situation, the guy that eats his kids and does all that, that everything seems to have come from. Um, yeah. So here we see that uh, more information on Baal. The Baal of the Ugarit was the epithet of Hadad, but as time passed, the epithet became the god's name, while Hadad became an epithet. Baal is usually said to be the son of Dagon, but appears to be one of the son of El in the Ugaritic sources. Both all and Er are associated with the bull in the Ugaritic text, and later the ram, by the way. The virgin goddess Anat was his sister and sometimes credited with a child through him. The virgin birth. This is something that was around before Abraham that this had happened, that these people are well aware of, and Abraham would have been well aware of. It um, it tells you that. Uh, see if you see any comparisons here to what we know about in the Bible. He held special enmity against snakes. He held special enmity against snakes. Well. Didn't the God of the Bible say that he was going to make enmity between the snake and the women and stuff? And Yeah. And uh, it also tells you that uh, he kills Yom, or Yamu, which is the sea. And this is the exact same thing that they do in the Bible. The Canaanite sea god and river god. He fought Tannin, the twisted serpent, and Lytan, the figurative serpent, Leviathan. That's biblical Leviathan. The mighty one with seven heads. Huh. Now... It's saying that he does all this. They're telling you that this is the prototype of what's in the seventh chapter of the biblical book, Daniel, as vanquisher of the sea. So if they're claiming this, and all the other religions around them say that it is Baal that does this, wouldn't it be easy and simple in your mind to say that these people at that time were worshiping this deity? It is. And one other small interjection here. It tells you that uh, the, the text that Ugarit revealed that they were considered local manifestations of this particular deity analogous to the local manifestation, manifestations of the Virgin Mary in the Roman Catholic Church. That that virgin birth up there is what they twisted around and put in the Bible there. That's what they say. So what they're basically saying here with all this is every time you see the word Lord in your Bible, that that would actually be the word Baal and a different entity altogether. They allude here in the scripts to telling you that uh, L himself really doesn't do much. He's kind of a kickback guy, but Baal is the one that really does something. So whenever they go against uh, the Canaanites and uh, get try to get them to light the fire that's all wet and everything, and their God doesn't do anything, but then our God apparently does do something, that that was actually Baal that lit the fire and had nothing to do with anyone else. El didn't show up, but Baal did. It tells you in here that uh, he was worshipped as Baal Karnaim, which is Lord of the Two Horns, particularly in open-air sanctuaries and stuff, the Two-Horned Hill uh, at Carthage. And Karnaim is extremely close to Karnak, 
which is the Egyptian place where they all bury their deities. Biblical study uh, John Day states that as far as the names Ishabal, Meribal, and Bealdal, Beala are concerned, it is not certain whether they simply allude to the Canaanite god Baal or intend to equate Yahweh with Baal. I'm telling you that um, the Yahweh thing was just put in later, and uh, it's just straight up Baal.